a CRN original. Attention, you are about to hear the captivating voice of an icon in the movie industry. You have heard him and seen him in performances in over 140 films. He's met and influenced many world leaders, and now he's about to tell you how to unite the America he loves. That job's filled. Unique. Unique. Brilliant. Brilliant. And unpredictable. Unpredictable. Robert Davi is a renaissance man who writes, directs, sings, and does it all with excellence. Yeah, it's okay. We're all very impressed, but let's get on with it now. Robert Dobby believes he should use his voice to both repay and help unite America, the America that made his dreams come true. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Robert Dobby Show. Uh, welcome to the Robert Davi Show. Mr. Davi is indeed unpredictable, which is why I'm filling in for him as the co-host. My name is Thaddeus McCotter. I was once a member of Congress, but no more, which means I've been promoted back to the status of sovereign citizen, and I have no culpability for the monstrosities of legislation that the Democratic majority is trying to foist upon average Americans. So, without any further ado, let us reference where Robert is. I can't really say that because he's not only unpredictable, he's a very mysterious man, but we can say that he's working on an artistic project which he hopes to be able to bring to audiences in the near future. So for Robert, we wish him well and safe travels, and may he be very successful in his artistic endeavor. Our first guest here at the Robert Davi Show is going to be Michael A. Letts. Mr. Letts is the founder, president, and CEO of Invest USA, a national grassroots nonprofit organization that is helping hundreds of communities provide thousands of bulletproof vests for their police forces through educational, public relations, sponsorship, and fundraising programs. As of January 2021, they have provided over more than 6,500 concealable and active shooter vests to our police office throughout the United States and globally. Truly, he's a man of leadership and passion. Through his work, he has also been actively involved in founding the First Responder Academy, Public Charter High School, and Hope Academy. And he also has launched, through the Invest USA initiative, Pennies for Police, which allows our children to support and interface with their local school resource officers by helping to provide that officer with a bulletproof vest. It's part of his efforts to, quote, save a kid, save a cop. With us now, without further ado, is the winner, the awardee of a Congressional Gold Medal for Community Service and the South Carolina Order of the Palmetto, that state's highest civilian honor for extraordinary lifetime achievement and service to the state and nation, Michael A. Letts. Welcome to the Robert Davi Show. Well, it's indeed my privilege and honor to be with you today. I'm uh... Boy, that was an impressive thing you read. I was just wanting to make sure that was me. I'm only teasing with you, but it's uh, great to hear to be here today. Oh, no, it's our honor to be with you. In fact, I have many friends down in South Carolina. Maybe you want to run across one of them, a friend uh, named Gresham Barrett used to be in Congress. I know with Gresham me. well. Sure do. Yeah. yeah. If you see him, say hello. In Congress in the 3rd District. Yeah, let's say, tell him I said hello and that he owes me $5. I'll tell him it's 10. We'll split the difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Lutz, what can you tell us about Invest USA? Well, I will tell you this. It's a, an organization I started almost 30 years ago. It's become a significant, much more so now, because of the crisis situation we're in, our first responders across the country. We started it in 1993 when I found out that my local deputies didn't have vests at all. At 220 of them we had to outfit. We were able to complete that and then try to shut it down and just haven't been able to find an exit strategy ever since. So we had to expand nationwide. And we just got back a couple of days ago from the Texas border, providing five different sheriff's departments and a couple of municipalities with active shooter vests because, you know, they're being shot at by drug dealers, among other things, across the river with automatic weapons, with uh, 50 caliber machine guns. Uh, hard to defend yourself unless you have an active shooter vessel, that kind of a situation. Yes, I would like to 
if I can, I'd like to go further into how people can support Invest USA and the other programs that you've launched. But since you were at the border, can you go and describe a little more detail about what you saw firsthand down there? Is it as well, bad as we're hearing? It is it, worse, and I'm happy and honored to do so. When we were down there, the human trafficking, sex trafficking, is up by 1,379% from last year alone. There were last year in the desert in Sheriff uh, Carrillo's uh, area on Culverson County, they recovered nine bodies last year. This year they've got 92 and it's still counting. So the influx, it's literally an invasion coming across. It is heartbreaking to see the few amount of resources that we've placed on the border, yet they're doing such an effective job, they're pouring their heart into it. The least we can do is to make sure they have the equipment that they need to be able to protect themselves and come home safely to their families. It was just an outpouring of emotional support for these officers because morale is lower than it's ever been in our first responders, and for good reason, because uh, the government is not providing this support. Not only are they not providing the support, they're making sure they do everything they can to make life miserable for them, get them to quit, and that's a shame. It must be, yes, it must, you must have seen incredible frustration on the part of law enforcement on the, on the ICE uh, agents down there because the federal government is not only refusing to enforce the law, it's actually thwarting them in their ability they to are. try to enforce the law and defend our, our nation. But I also, you must have seen an incredible amount of frustration amongst the local population uh, down there because of what's going on, especially the Hispanic community, which is not supportive of this type of policy. No, they're not. And, and I'll tell you, use examples as to why they're not supportive. We were down there for three days, and during the time, drone footage was given to me to where these illegal immigrants coming across the border were actually carjacking people, even Latinos, carjacking them in the middle of the night, stealing their cars, uh, robbing them, assaulting them. They're, they're fed up. They want law and order. They don't want what's coming across that border. You know, we have credible intel from the Panamanian government that uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda members are now in those countries and are becoming part of this migration of herds that are coming across. So it becomes a matter of national security now. If we don't do something quickly on our border situation, we're going to be subjected to more terrorist attacks than we've ever imagined in this country. And Mr. Letts, you are the founder here at the Robert Dobby Show. Just to remind our listeners, Mr. Letts is the founder, president, and CEO of Invest USA, a national grassroots nonprofit organization that is helping provide vests for our law enforcement. Now, Mr. Letts, obviously the zeitgeist, especially in the summer of 2020, was to try to demonize the police and make it try to pit the average citizen against those other citizens who are trying to protect us uh, from right. crime. So you're kind of swimming against the zeitgeist since then, which I think is wonderful, to protect our law enforcement officers. My question to you then, what was, was that the inspiration for the Pennies for Police initiative, or was that something that you had in place prior to that and is even more essential now? It, it was in place prior. We've had it in place for about 10 years, but it's more essential now. Here's a situation that you run into. I, I feel for our school resource officers. Of course, I'm a law enforcement officer myself. But we place these school resource officers into schools. We ask them to do the impossible, which is connect with young people, to have them have a high regard for law enforcement, and uh, get them to make sure that they don't take to a life of crime. Well, I figured the best way to do that is to have young people feel like they have a part or ownership in law enforcement, ownership in these first responders. So let them bring pennies for police. You know, it really doesn't make any difference whether they raise the exact dollar amount or not. We've got plenty of corporate supporters that will help make up the difference. But it's amazing to have all these kids get excited about bringing their change. That's all we're asking for is pocket change at home. Bring it all, collect it all, buy, buy a vest, and then present it to that officer as a unified body in a student organization or student assembly. It makes them proud of that officer, and that officer is proud of them as well. It just really makes a huge difference in the morale and their ability to perform what they're doing in schools. Well, it truly makes it difficult to demonize a law enforcement officer when you've met them, you've interacted with them, and you've known them since you were little growing up and knowing that they were there to protect you. Correct. To serve you. I was asked, was that also the logic then to help increase this and to potentially provide training for future law enforcement officers when you founded the first responder academy, Public Charter High School and Hope Academy? 
it was part of it. I'll tell your listeners something that they need to be aware of. That was the other part, which is staggering. And that is that the NIJ, the Department of Justice statistics, show that within three years, there will not be enough first responders to answer the calls. So across this great country of ours, you'll start dialing 911 and get a recording. Please state the nature of your emergency. We'll call back back as soon as possible. Well, you know, that's one thing if you're trying to get an incident report of uh, something that was stolen. It's quite another matter if somebody's trying to crash through your front door and take your life. You can't afford to have a non-response call. But that's where we're headed because of the fact that the left, the Marxists, the socialists have done such a strong job of demonizing law enforcement. You find very few young people that are interested in wearing a badge anymore. This country will be in a national security crisis within the next few years if we don't have first responders on the street to provide our protection and the services that we need. Well, it's also ironic, bitterly ironic, when you see people who have helped demonize the police from day one, such as Ilian Omar, representative from Minnesota, that then all of a sudden turn around and start complaining that law enforcement isn't helping stopping, to stop crime enough. I mean, it's insane. So it let me insane. ask you this. In the minute that we have left, Mr. Letts, we're talking to Michael A. Letts, how does someone engage with Invest USA? Is there a website? How do people yes. reach you and contribute? If they will go to our website, that's I-N-V-E-S-T-U-S-A.org, investusa.org, it's a charity. They'll find a list of things they can do. They can not only donate to help make sure our officers have the best they need, but I tell each and every person, listen, the greatest thing you can do for America today is find your first responder in your area, pat them on the back, and say, thanks for a job well done. Well, and thank you for a job well done, Michael A. Letts, founder and CEO of Invest USA. God bless you, and God bless all those who seek to protect and serve us through law enforcement. Thank you so much. God bless America. I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. At 67, I went to see the doctor for the first time in my life and found out that I had medical problems. He told me that was normal for my age. I don't believe God intended us to be sick and old. I decided to find something to bring my health back. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the human system. Balance 7 gave me back what I lost by getting older. I no longer get out of bed with a joint discomfort. Balance 7 can do for you what it has done for me and many others. In three days' time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort, and clarity of thinking. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking the healthy immune system. Bring your body back to balance. Order now. Receive free shipping with the code word L. Go to Balance7.com. That's Balance7.com. Order now and get your free shipping and a free gift with your order. Go to Balance7.com. Use the code word L. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help you can always get fast help and fast answers so on your next trip maybe today maybe tomorrow how about right now pick up your phone and call smart fares plus save up to 75 percent in your plane reservation so call right now 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 800-915-2644 let's talk about your credit cards when you first start using them it's a slow drip you make charges, then more charges, then bills come, and they keep coming. When you open your statements, the floodgates come pouring in. You realize you have more credit card debt than you can afford, and you're barely making the minimum payments. Wouldn't it be nice to make one affordable payment and have all your credit card bills covered? Make this free call and learn our responsible way to get your credit card bills paid 
and under control. Sponsored by Consumer Education Services, a nonprofit organization. 800 876 3643. 800 876 3643. 800 876 3643. That's 800 876 3643. CESI is not a loan company. The establishment of a debt management plan may adversely affect your credit rating. Non-payment of debt may lead creditors to increase finance and other charges to undertake collection activity, including liquidation. Robert Davi. You know, I'm the one delivering the message, not receiving it. Welcome back to the Robert Davi Show. Robert may be receiving and delivering messages, but he won't be doing it here today. I'm Thaddeus McCotter, your guest host. And with us here on the Robert Davi Show, in the spirit of Robert Davi, who was an entertainer par excellence, what we have, consummate entertainer, what we have with us now is Richard Goodbye. Richard is also a bit of a Renaissance man, as well as a raconteur. Richard, welcome to the Robert Davi Show. Thank you, Matt. Bad. Great to be with you. I, I, did a, I did notice you had a little bit of a higher voice than Robert I knew that this was a guest hosting situation. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm all right, man. I'm doing okay. You know, I, 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 I was going to go through your huge resume, but I know that since you're, uh, since you're an artist, you don't mind telling people all the awards that you got. But let me just say that you are an Emmy-winning veteran of film, television, and music. Are you not? Well, um, that makes it sound pretty good, and, and uh, through the grace of God, that is true. I have definitely been leading a blessed and charmed life, actually making a living in the arts, and um, I'm very grateful for that. See, Richard, that's one of the things, one of the reasons I think, obviously, I think you're a perfect guest for Robert Davi's show, because they like to deal with politics, but they also like to deal with entertainment, the entertainment business end of it. So one of the things I'd like to ask you, because Robert always told me one of the things he was proudest of was the fact that he was a working actor, quote unquote, the fact that he could make a living doing it, that that was his, not only his passion, but his vocation. And it was also a way, a means for him to provide for his family and loved ones. You are a working uh, director, working entertainer. So how did you come to this? Was this something you've always wanted to do? Because it takes, it seems like it must take like the devotion, a dedication to a dream to try, try to realize that. Well, I think you, you you brought up a lot of great points, and um, it's something I honestly relate to directly. Um, you know, I, and I've felt the same way. I've made my living in the arts. It's my vocation. It's my trade. You know, I started out primarily as an actor um, and a musician and evolved into directing and producing. But it's it's something that, I, that I've done to get up every day and do my job, like going to work. Um, you know, I've met a lot of amazing and interesting and incredible people in the entertainment business. And I've also met a lot of crazy ones. And I, when I say crazy, I really mean to say that with sympathy because, you know, I didn't get into this business because my parents didn't love me enough or because they, they loved me too much. I got into this business because this is what I wanted to do for my job. And, um, you know, I was raised in a wonderful middle-class family where my dad was an electrical engineer by trade, but also a great pianist. And my mom, though she went on to do amazing social work, uh, relocating refugees from Eastern Europe, while we were growing up, she was a stay-at-home mom, but had also been a ballerina. So I grew up in a very uh, traditional yet uh, a house full of art. And um, I really decided that this is what I was going to do for my job, and I, I did it for my job. And so what's interesting is over the 30 plus years I've been doing this, you know, I'm, I'm only like 38, but I've been doing, no, <laughs> the 30 plus years really? I've been doing this, uh, no, the 30 plus years I've been doing this, um, there have been a couple of times where people have said to me, said, hey, you know, I saw this movie on Showtime at 11 o'clock at night on Thursday, and boy, it was kind of cheesy, why'd you make that movie? And I, and I would always say, well, you know, this is what I do to eat, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a, a trust fund. And I also, um, not that I don't have standards, but you know, if somebody offers me a job and I'm supposed to go to work and I'm going to do something that's a uh, part of my vocation, if, if I'm not working, um, you know, we like to, we like to eat every day and we like to keep our house and, and keep the kids fed. And 
So I've definitely had a, a very pragmatic view at what I do. So I've, I've often, you know, treated it like a job while, of course, being a guitar player yourself, speaking of raconteurs, um, I don't even know what that word means, but I really love it. Um, you know, uh, I'm very passionate about what I do, but also pragmatic. It's my job. And I, I'm, on, I'm on Robert's page there. Yeah, we're talking with Richard Goodbye, a Emmy Award-winning veteran of film, television, and music about the entertainment business. Now, you know, as, as you point out, Richard, it's like the philosopher Dinky McSweeney once said, a man's got to eat. <laughs> so you just got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, but when but when you th when you think about it though, people always would ask me about should I go into politics? Oh, it must be exciting and it must be all this. And I would always reference you and others that I know in the entertainment world, and I would say, yeah, and acting looks like it's a lot of fun or directing looks like it's a lot of fun, but you don't see the heartbreak and the hard work along the way and the things that you would rather not have to experience. If you only look at the end result, it gives you a false impression of it, doesn't it? Yeah, ab I mean, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. There, there are wonderful moments, and uh, um, you know, it's, it's a business where when it's good, it's really good, and when it's not good, it's really not good. But the actual day-to-day -day work, you know, you 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 spend six months trying to get a movie off the ground, and then you know, it's two o'clock in the morning, and you're on a location, and it's twenty-five degrees, and you didn't bring the right jacket, and you just work all night. Um, you know, there's been, you know, stories in the news lately, uh, you know, not talk about something so unpleasant and tragic, but the, what, what happened in, in, in New Mexico on this, this, this film, this Western film with Alec Baldwin. And one of the things that are talking about that people talk about, well, the, you know, poor working conditions on a low budget film and without getting into the minutiae of, of that accident, which really is something hard to speak about, is that, right. you know, the working conditions on every low budget movie, are, are bad. If you would actually analyze the working conditions, you know, 12 hour days are a minimum. You know, you're, 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 you know, if you're not on a sound stage, you're outside. And, you know, it's, if you just, you know, pragmatic working conditions, as opposed to being in an air conditioned environment or being in the mall or wherever you might be working, you know, it's, and it's physical work, even if, if you're the director or if you're doing the makeup or props, it's physical work. It's, it's, it's mostly blue collar work, honestly. And undergirding so, it all, just like politics, wouldn't it be is a sense of rejection. You're going to be rejected. You're going to be rejected by certain voters. You're going to be rejected uh, by certain pundits, just like an actor or director has their work will then be rejected by some elements of the community, or they may be rejected by the casting director or something else. So you have to overcome that, don't you? You got to toughen up a little bit, don't you? you? You have to toughen up. And I think anyone who says it doesn't feel like a gut punch every now and then probably isn't telling the truth. But um, all these years in, I'm still scrapping every day. And you know, oftentimes being rejected or even, you know, not having my call returned, you know, and so, and, and it, and, that, and so it, on my side of things, well, I always, I, I make sure I return every call and I return every email because I don't ever want to be that guy. And the other interesting thing about our business with all of the rejection, someone who might have not returned two calls and three emails will call you and say, hey, are you available in two weeks? Uh, well, we're going to send you a business class ticket. We need you for this movie. The same person that this is the Robert Davi show. We're talking. This, this is the Robert Davi show. We're talking with Richard Goodbye. We will be back after these messages. Attention real estate investors, do you need cash immediately? If you own one or multiple rental properties, you can use your equity to get cash out fast. The best part is we don't need tax returns or even a good credit score. At America's Loan Source, we are not a bank and we don't have bank rules. We make the decisions to loan you money and there's no limit how much we can give you. Some clients have gotten as much as $500,000 or more within days. Use the money anywhere 
way you want if you own one rental property or a hundred and COVID has left you in a cash crunch. We can help you turn your equity into fast cash. Call now for details and close in as little as 10 days and get the cash you need. 800-353-1760. That's 800-353-1760. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call myflightsearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Have you heard about Vine to Bar Chocolate? It's the winemaker's chocolate, the world's first chocolate made with well-vined Chardonnay Mark from the beautiful coastal vineyards of North America. Gently pressed grapes are harvested after juicing, dried, and finely milled and carefully blended into the finest dark chocolate. The Chardonnay Mark contains highly beneficial grape nutrients, flavanols, and has a natural sweetness that flavors the luscious dark chocolate. Mouthwatering, flavorful, delectable dark chocolate goodness with Chardonnay sweetness and beneficial nutrients. And it's alcohol-free, too. It's Vine to Bar chocolate. Order some today at vinetobar.com. That's V-I-N-E-T-O-B-A-R.com cold ship to your door it's vine to bar vine to bar chocolate visit us at vine to bar.com if ernest hemingway was alive today would he say this to you shakespeare mark twain edgar Allan poe all great writers and after reading your book i simply must add you to the list wait you don't have a book yet so make a free call to page publishing their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book a masterpiece that could someday make the best seller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world page publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book write it and publish it so if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world call now for a free information kit turn your book idea into publishing gold make a free call right now to page publishing 800-378-3212 800-378-3212 800-378-3212 that's 800-378-3212 the robert dobby show I'm Dwayne Robinson, LAPD. I'm in charge here. Not anymore. Welcome back to the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter. I will not be filling in for Robert much longer, but I just want to say how much I've appreciated the opportunity. Robert is away working on a project that he hopes to bring to audiences in the near future, which is appropriately why we're bringing on Richard Goodbye, an Emmy Award-winning veteran of film, television, and music. Uh, Richard, we were talking about how you got involved in this. Now, you went to the University of Southern California. Was that so that you could become a director? Because it doesn't it's not always the same thing as somebody becoming an actor. They do not always necessarily become a director, but you've made a f- conscious determination, didn't you, that you wanted to direct as well as act? Well, I, I did, I did, but it wasn't until after I got out of college. I mean, truth be told, I, I, I went to USC because I, I had first gone to school at San Diego State, and the second I got there, I had kind of realized I made a tactical and strategic error because I was now 150 miles away from my rock band. So as soon as I got there, I realized I had to make a plan to get back up to L.A., and I, I was... 
I was going to a semester school, so kind of my only choices were UCLA and USC, and USC was a semester school like the one I was in, so I jumped up there. Now, the truth is, I applied to the cinema and television school at USC, and my first application, uh, I was rejected, which was the first time in my life, you know, that I didn't sort of get what I applied for, and... uh, one of the counselors said, oh, no, no, we don't accept anybody the first time, but finish up your GE and you'll get in the next semester. And then I read all about the program, and I learned that the movies you made when you were there, not only did you have to pay the tuition, but you also had to pay to make your movie, and then they owned it. And that just didn't line up with my capitalist sensibilities. <laughs> and and I also then um, jumped to journalism which was an, an amazing school at USC. It's now the Annenberg School of Journalism. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the stuff that I learned from my journalism professors at USC, I use every day. And so I really honestly cherish the education I got there, but it ended up being from the journalism school. And, you know, going back to whether or not I really wanted to direct, it really wasn't on my mind until I got out of college. I luckily immediately booked a Budweiser beer commercial, and I was sitting on my couch getting these thank God, exorbitant checks, residual checks, basically sitting on my couch with my guitar eating grapes and pretzels, waiting for my agent to call me to go to another audition, and it just didn't sit right with my work ethic. So after I had an opportunity to to star in this very low-budget film, I asked the director, well, how much did this movie cost? And I thought, well, I should probably do this myself because I need to go to work every day. I can't just, you know, sit around. I I gotta work, and of course, Hence became the love of directing and actual filmmaking. Well, we're talking with Richard Goodbye here at the Robert Davi Show. Uh, Richard, you mentioned that um, you were an actor, you're a director. What were some of the first films you worked on, both as an actor and a director? And what are you working on now? Well, um, early on, I, uh, I, I, I was in this movie called Nightmare Sisters which became called Night Visitors, which was shot in Sharon, Pennsylvania. And it was not only my first feature, but it was the first time I also went on location. So then I also learned that not only are the working conditions not always great, but boy, is it a lot of fun. There's nothing more fun than the camaraderie of a film crew and a cast and being on location where everyone's in a hotel all towards a common goal. So I really fell in love with that whole idea uh, on that movie. Um, then I, I ended up acting in this four-day movie called Nightmare Sisters, and that's the movie I just was telling you about. And I asked the director how much the movie cost, and this was shooting film, by the way. He said, well, I made it for $40,000. And so I said to myself, well, then, if I raised $40,000, I guess I could make my own movie. It was just very simple thinking. So I raised $4,000 from 10 different people with the help of my brother and some friends, and I wrote a script on a typewriter over a weekend. Yeah, there was this thing called a typewriter. No cell phones. And I wrote a script called Assault of the Party Nerds, which was um, a Revenge of the Nerds Animal House complete ripoff. And that film, you know, ended up playing on TBS on New Year's Eve and is now streaming and still, you know, had taken a life of its own. So then Assault of the Party Nerds, and then Virgin High, which is now in the MGM library, and it goes on and on and on and on. And most recently, um, I made a Western uh, a few years ago called Justice that is now on um, streaming on Netflix. And ironically, I became reacquainted with a friend of mine, Robert Carradine, who, of course, is the star of Revenge of the Nerds. So I I was able to sort of pay him back by – uh, hiring him to be in my movie, having started my career, you basically ripping him off. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, well, welcome to Hollywood. I, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I learned that really, really quickly. I mean, uh, sometimes life imitates art, and art imitates life, and sometimes art imitates art. Um, but um, also, more recently, I've had the great opportunity to direct a couple of films for the Hallmark Channel. Um, one of my saw was on TV last week called The Gingerbread Romance, a Christmas movie. And um, and a, a, a several films for for the Lifetime, the A and E networks, and um, last year I had a great acting opportunity. I'm in a film that's on all the streamers now called Assault on VA33 with my 
ironically, with my good friend Sean Patrick Flannery, who starred in my movie Insight. So as the bigger the business gets, the smaller it gets also. And I, I've been blessed to be around long enough to start to run into a lot of the same people. Although I have to We're say We're talking with Richard Gibb. You have to say? Oh, uh, yeah, we well, started talking about What do you have to our say? Beloved, our beloved, <laughs> Finish our your thought, Richard. Robert, Robert Davi, I, uh, I, I tried to get him in one of my movies, and we didn't hear back. And when I, when I met Robert at an event for the troops that I think Gary Sinise had invited us both to, he said, well, my agent never told me you offered me a movie. So that's Hollywood also. Well, we need we need to get you and Robert collaborating on something when he gets back. I just think it would be wonderful uh, to have you both do it. I think you also, in your humility, what little you have left of it, you forgot to mention that you've also recently, as, as recently as 2020, you've won an Emmy for being a producer on the popular Amazon series The Bay, haven't you? Yes, thank you so much. And that, and that is very much Hollywood. That, that project is really the brainchild of Gregory Martin. I'm not uh, really too creatively involved in it, but I, I was uh, blessed to get asked to come on as a producer and produce the post-production and get involved in helping actually getting it, getting it to air. So um, I, I've worked on a million shows much harder, but the opportunity came along, and lo and behold, we were nominated for an Emmy, and I have an Emmy in my living room, and uh, I'm very proud of it, and my mom and my wife are even more proud of it. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity. And the Bay is now on Pop TV. It's moved from Amazon to Pop TV. And it's in, you know, the seasons keep coming. So I'm very, very grateful to be involved in that, in that great show. Now, Richard, you're also a composer, musician, and a singer. And you've had song placements in dozens of films and TV shows. I think your most recent album is called Double Life, isn't it? Yeah, my, the, our Double Life album is streaming everywhere, thankfully. And um, this year I also recorded a new song called We'll Be Back Again as we sort of were breaking out of COVID. And that was really fun because I did, we did one of those remote recordings and uh, a fiddle player named Patrick Ross, who is actually living in Vermont, that I had met when I was on location in Montana, played violin. And my, my friend Eric Troyer, who is really a famous rock star, having sung with Meatloaf and Celine Dion and Billy Joel and with the orchestra, which is um, basically the electric light orchestra uh, since Jeff Lynn left. Um, he sang back up from his studio in New Jersey. My friend Tom Walsh played the drums here locally, but we, we, uh, we, we did this whole remote collaboration and um, that video is up on YouTube and you're, uh, hopefully the viewers can check that out. It's called We'll Be Back Again and a real upbeat tune. And um, yes, we're yeah, talking we, with we keep writing and recording. Beautiful. We're talking with Richard Goodbye, an Emmy Award winning veteran of film, television, and music here at the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter, and we will be back to delve into the pressing issue of censorship after this. I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. At 67, I went to see the doctor for the first time in my life and found out that I had medical problems. He told me that was normal for my age. I don't believe God intended us to be sick and old. I decided to find something to bring my health back. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the human system. Balance 7 gave me back what I lost by getting older. I no longer get out of bed with a joint discomfort. Balance 7 can do for you what it has done for me and many others. In three days time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort and clarity of thinking. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking the healthy immune system. Bring your body back to balance. Order now, receive free shipping with the code word AL. Go to balance7.com, that's balance7.com. Order now and get your free shipping and a free gift with your order. Go to balance7.com, Use the code word L. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. 
The sizzle. The sizzle of a Ruth's Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at RuthsChris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Let's talk about your credit cards. When you first start using them, it's a slow drip. You make charges, then more charges, then bills come, and they keep coming. When you open your statements, the floodgates come pouring in. You realize you have more credit card debt than you can afford, and you're barely making the minimum payments. Wouldn't it be nice to make one affordable payment and have all your credit card bills covered? Make this free call and learn our responsible way to get your credit card bills paid and under control. Sponsored by Consumer Education Services, a nonprofit organization. 800 876 3643. 800 876 3643. 800 876 3643. That's 800 876 3643. CESI is not a loan company. The establishment of a debt management plan may adversely affect your credit rating. Non payment of debt may lead creditors to increase finance and other charges to undertake collection activity, including liquidation. Robert Davi. I guess it's time to start turning overhead. Welcome back to the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter. With us today is Emmy Award winning veteran of film, television, and music, Richard Goodbye. Uh, Richard, as someone who is very artistic, someone who is engaged in the creation of movies, directed them, acted in them, and someone who's also a composer and musician who plays uh, frequently out there in L.A. You have to be very concerned about the rise of censorship, aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am, um, you know, it's, it, it's almost like um, this can't be happening. It's almost sort of reached that level. I mean, um, and I, once it stop, starts, we don't know where it will stop. I mean, I know this. the most recent thing that comes to mind is Dave Chappelle's special, you know, and and um, just the amount of just seems like uh, there isn't anything that can't be canceled. But it's unfortunate because what people who are more than supportive of censorship seem to think they'll never be censored themselves. What happens is you have to think of the amount of hubris and egotism that goes into the fact that you think you can make a determination on what somebody else can listen to, what somebody else can think about, and make a decision as to how that will affect them if they are exposed to such speech, and to take it upon yourself to decide that you're going to be the arbiter of American culture or the intellectual development of anybody else. It's disgusting, it's despicable, and it has to end. And personally, I think Chappelle's doing a great job standing up to the mob, and you're seeing this in other areas, too. I think people are getting tired of it, Richard. I mean, that's at least my view here in the Detroit area. Are you seeing similar things out there, especially amongst the artistic community, which is really on the firing line? They're the first people that are going to be censored. Right. I do I do have to, you know, being candid, I, I am hearing it and seeing it, but I'm still honestly mostly seeing it and hearing it in whispers. Um, I, I go to lunch with colleagues, and, and, and it's definitely not a Republican or Democrat issue. It's not sort of what people traditionally define as left and right. Um, um, I had a lunch with a buddy of mine who's, you know, you know, very, very, very proud, you know, Democrat, and, and he just, under his breath, whispering, you know, I just can't take this anymore. I can't, I, you know. But it's still, honestly, other than God bless, you know, Dave Chappelle and, and a few other examples, and there are more and more, I do think that, that mostly it's still just whispers that people are scared. I mean, I literally, um, you know, I, I had someone uh, send me a message because 
I wished happy birthday to a Facebook friend of mine who had posted something political that they didn't agree with. And, you know, I, I wrote this person back. I was like, you know, I, I, I have a lot of friends, and we don't all agree on everything, but we're friends. And, you know, you can unfriend me because you don't want to be friends with me because I'm friends with people that have different views than, honestly, that I have myself. So I, I have to say that it still kind of feels like it's mostly being whispered. So we need more well, people I, I like Dave Chappelle. Well, I think that would also make sense in, in your out there in Hollywood, out there within the artistic community, because obviously that is what they do for a living. It's not just a specific instance of saying something somebody doesn't like. It's actually your livelihood that they could threaten, uh, that they could then try to demonetize you. But unfortunately, I think what we're seeing now is the total lack of self-awareness of individuals who wish to cancel people, that they are not the good guys. They're the bad guys. And if you think about what the role of art is to do, not only does it talk about the universality of the human condition and help us to lead to a greater understanding of each other, when you decide what people can or cannot hear, what you're doing is cheating them of their own intellectual development, their own ability to empathize, to sympathize, to understand what other people are going through. There is no case where I can think of where some of the greatest art that has come forward has not wanted to, have not had people wanting to censor it when it first came out. Yeah, it's, it's never been the good guys that burn the books. And um, it's, it's really, really upsetting. And, and I, I know that, you know, America is, is still America, and we, we are a great and free society, and I, and I, and I don't think we're going to let it continue to happen. We just can't. There's nothing more, there's nothing more offensive than a censor. Nothing. Anything else I can deal with, I can turn off, I can walk away from. But the person who tries to stop me from seeing something or to think about something, there's nothing more offensive than that, trying to substitute their judgment for mine as to what I want to learn or what I want to understand or what I want to say. And that is not a right-wing or left-wing proposition. It's a human proposition, and we all have that God-given right. But anyways, Richard, you talked about some of the stuff you're doing, and I don't want to, if I can step off my soapbox for a little bit, what I would like to do is to give you an opportunity to tell people where they can find out more about what you're working on and where they could potentially find some of your music or some of your movies. Well, cool. Well, but, you know, I, 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 Pat, I like your soapbox. And as you know, I, 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 I like to read it's got room for uh, two <laughs> quick, quick, quick and quick and witty uh, articles. So I, I get, I get a lot of my knowledge from your columns in American greatness. And, uh, and I, and I get a lot of knowledge from the columns I read on CNN. I, I, I need to learn. I'm not. I'm not quite up to speed. But thanks for the opportunity to, to uh, speak to uh, all of Robert's fans. And uh, you know, my website is richardgabai.net. Richard G A B A I dot net. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. The Double Life album is streaming on all the services. We'll be back again. Is streaming on all the services. You know, we have thankfully a bunch of movies streaming on all the services. And now the reality of the show business is while I'm attached to three different projects in different states of preparation, I don't have a job right now that I actually go to work to. So I'm sitting here in my backyard uh, just thanking God for all the blessings I have. I'm, I imagine I'm going to be on the set again pretty soon, but I am a little bit superstitious. So I don't like to say I'm starting something next Thursday until there's been a non-refundable deposit put somewhere. But, um, and you're all, you can also be reached at Check Entertainment, too. I just want to make sure people got that. Uh, oh, yeah. Check Entertainment is the sort of our production and distribution company. We've been able to help a lot of my friends get their movies released. And um, the, the exciting thing locally is that, you know, we, I, I have a little, my little band, and uh, let's hope that I'm going to be able to tell you really quick soon that I have a date at the Troubadour because we've been working on that. That's one of the only kind of big nightclub here in town that I've always wanted to play on. I think that's going to happen in the coming months. But one of these days I got to sit in with you guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to... You do. You do. Hop on a plane Raise. and get out there. Raise the bar 150, 150%. But yeah, I'm telling you, the the music is, is the best part. It's, it's, it's so fun and so therapeutic and I I've encouraged my kids, and my, my son is, is, is a rock and musician, and I, I always, you know, I have some guys working on, 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 on our house here doing some painting, and 
sure enough, the guy's a mariachi singer, and all we've been talking about is music. So there is a universal language, and, and sad that, you know, talk about censorship, you know, there's the, the big thing now where that rapper is being censored for his, his views that uh, Let's Go Brandon. It's it. Uh, his Let's video go, was Brandon. pulled it's from YouTube. I'm not a, Which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Be, why? 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 That's political yeah, speech. I mean, that uh, is the highest uh, protected form of speech. Right. I, you know, just because I heard it was banned, I played the song. I mean, God bless the guy. It wasn't the, I'm not a rap fan anyway. I don't, I don't, right. but, yeah. but I didn't really love the song, but just the idea that why would YouTube not let his video be on? I mean, let's, don't watch it. Yeah. If you don't, don't like it, it, look, I'm, I, I don't like rap. I don't like a lot of the things in rap, but that's not my job is to destroy rap is to let it, I turn it off. I don't like it. Okay. I can even argue against it. I can even argue why people shouldn't listen to it, but I can't cancel it. I can't cancel the people who put it out and nor should I, if other people can make their own determinations, if they want to listen to it, which is fine. In the end, <laughs> I'm not selfish enough to be a censor. And I know about how much I don't know, and I know that I should never be a censor of anybody else's information. And it's unfortunate that a lot of kids are being lied to that somehow speech is insightful. Again, nothing is more dangerous or leads you toward authoritarianism or tyrannical government more than a censor. That is the first step, and these kids better pull their heads out of their rear ends and understand it before they wind up living in, a, in an unfree republic underneath a totalitarian government. But I digress. So I hope Richard, so. All, all I got to tell you is America is the greatest country in the world. And we are going to, you know, everyone's going to be able to speak because we're America and Americans are not going to put up with it. It's just not going to happen. And I'm not a fan of Let's Go Brandon, but I am a fan of his right to have his song on YouTube like everybody else. But not another been, a fan of them is Double Life. Double Life is streaming all over YouTube. My album is all over the place. We've been talking with Richard Gabay, Emmy Award-winning veteran of film, television, and music. We've discussed his career as a director, as an actor, his, his Emmy Award-winning role as a producer of The Bay, on The Bay. We've talked about his music, which he performs with the Czechs. He may be coming to the Troubadour. You can reach him at richardgabay.net, or you can reach him at checkentertainment.net. And as we've been discussing censorship, I just want to make one thing clear. I think Richard would agree with this. In the final analysis, democracy can be very messy. It can be very ugly. It can be very divisive. But in the end, that is the beauty of democracy. We all get to have our say, and then we can reach a consensus after we have it. Again, there's nothing more offensive or dangerous than a censor. And if you don't believe that, God help us all. America has God-given constitutional rights. Protect them, and more importantly, protect them for everybody else. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares.